2.3 Techniques for Computing Limits Continued We began Section 2 by 2.3 by discussing nice functions. A nice function is one in which to find the limit all you need to do is evaluate the function at the target point. What if a function is not nice? Uh, for example, maybe f of a does not exist. If that's true, then we can't find the limit by evaluating. This limit cannot be done by evaluation. Why is that? Look at the target point. The target point is 2. x is approaching 2. But what does the value 2 do to the denominator? For the denominator, if you were to just um, plug in the value of 2, you would get 0. So 2 is not in the domain of the function. f of 2 cannot be found. One strategy is to rewrite or simplify the expression. So we factor the numerator and cancel the common factor of x minus 2. Since these two functions are equal as long as x is not 2, their limits as x gets close to 2 are the same. To find this limit, we are going to use this limit. Now, the limit that I'm pointing to with a green arrow, can that, be, that limit be found by evaluating? Yes. That's a nice function at 2. At x equals 2, I get 4 in the denominator. So 2 is not a problem for the second uh, function. And so I go ahead and evaluate, and I get negative 1 half. Another example, this is also a limit that cannot be found by direct substitution. I can't just put 1 in for x. If I do that, I will end up with 0 over 0, which is what we call an indeterminate form. So we are going to rewrite the expression in hopes of finding a function that is equal to this one except for the target point. So let's simplify this. When a radical is involved, I recommend that you try using an algebraic conjugate. Look at the numerator. What is its algebraic conjugate? The algebraic conjugate of radical x minus 1 is radical x plus 1. So we are going to multiply the expression by radical x plus 1 over radical x plus 1. Now this may seem to be something that doesn't simplify it, but you will see it works very nicely. For the numerator, we find the product radical x minus 1 times radical x plus 1. Do not multiply the denominator. We want to leave that factored. In the numerator, combine like terms. We now cancel the factor x minus 1 that appears in the numerator and denominator.
and this is what we get. These two functions are equal everywhere except at x equals 1. At x equals 1, the first one cannot be evaluated. But at x equals 1, the second one can. So, they, since they agree everywhere except for at 1, to find the limit of the first, we need only find the limit of the second. To find the limit of the second, we need only evaluate. And we get one half. Another example. Again, to find the limit, we cannot just put in the value 2. If we put the value of 2 in, we'll end up with 0 in the denominator. That is not acceptable. So we're going to try to simplify the expression. It is helpful to know the formula for the difference of two cubes. We're going to factor the numerator using the formula for the difference of two cubes. Just keep in mind that 8 is 2 to the 3. And so we have an equivalent statement for the difference of two cubes, um, i.e., the numerator. Once we find that equivalent form, we can cancel the factor x minus 2 that is in both the numerator and the denominator. When we do that, again, we get two functions that are equal everywhere except at x equals 2. The function on the right-hand side, f, that's the one that we're trying to find the limit as x goes to 2. As I said, 2 is not in the domain of the function. You cannot put 2 into the function f. And you can see in the graph there's a hole where x equals 2. However, the expression can be simplified and we find that f equals g as long as x doesn't equal 2. Now look at g. At, for g, 2 uh, is in the domain of g. And so we can evaluate g of 2. So that's what we do. To find the first limit, we need only find the second limit. limit. To find the second limit, we need only evaluate. And when we do that, we get 3. Another strategy to find the limit is to use the squeeze theorem. Suppose on an open interval around your target point, you have g sandwiched between f and h. So g is always between f and h on some open interval that includes a. Suppose that the lower function has a limit of l, and the upper function has a limit of l. Then the squeeze theorem says, that g must also have a limit of l. Let's use that to find this limit. We need to squeeze x squared sine of 1 over x between two functions. We observe that sine is always between negative 1 and 1. We multiply by x squared.
and then we find the limit of the lower function and the upper function. So we have squeezed our function between negative x squared and positive x squared. The limit of x squared is 0. The limit of negative x squared is 0. So by the squeeze theorem, the limit of our function must be 0. And this function helps you to see what's going on. We have x squared on the top, negative x squared below, and that oscillating function is the function we're trying to examine. Even though it oscillates, it dampens down to 0 as x approaches 0. That's all for today. Uh, have, uh, have a great day. Take care, and let me know if you have any questions.